Hi guys, it's Anna. You might know me as Spring from the Grizzlies or Sarah in the upcoming CBC series The Trickster based off Eden Robinson, Son of a Trickster. And I'm partnering with Influencers Motivating Influencers today to bring you a video on how to do self-tape auditions at home. So I wanted to give a few tips and pointers on how to do a good self-tape audition at home and how to send something in that you're very confident and happy with. My first tip is to always be on the lookout for casting calls. If you're looking to get into film or television or commercials, then you can find casting calls actually very commonly on Facebook. Michelle Latimer actually posted um, the two character descriptions for the main uh, male performer and then another lead in uh, another lead youth role. And I almost didn't do it and I'm very happy that I did. Um, so always be on the lookout, don't doubt yourself, always go, just go for it if you fit the description. You never know what can happen, you never know how much it might change your life. Um, there's also websites that you can look at for casting calls, another good one is eBoss Canada. Um, I've seen quite a few casting calls on there. Also when you are responding to a casting call, make sure to always be polite because it leaves a very good first impression on the person that's receiving the email. Good impressions do really last and bad impressions last even longer. So if you manage to book an audition and the casting director gives you the next step to go forward with an audition, uh, you want to make sure that you have four things and that is a good quality camera. I use my iPhone, your cell phone, as long as the camera works and it you can see your eyes, you can see your face, then that should be fine. You want to make sure you have something to hold your phone or to lean your phone against. I bought a tripod specifically for the purpose of doing auditions. Um, but if you have like a bookshelf or just a table or like a stack of books, that also works. When I first started doing auditions frequently, um, I used my bookshelf with a stack of books and a candle to, to lean my phone on and I kneeled on the floor and um, would do my auditions like that. The next thing you want to make sure that you have is good lighting. So I bought a light to do auditions. It's like this really bright LED light that I'm using right now. Um, but if you don't have that, natural lighting is amazing. And it's actually my preference because I find natural lighting is so flattering. And you want to make sure that you don't have any dark shadows on your face when you're doing your auditions. Lastly, you want to make sure that you have a solid background. So what I have going on right here would not work for an audition because there's so much going on. You know, I have my light, my tapestry, my bed. So you want to make sure you're either against a plain wall or you have a sheet behind you. I've used bed sheets. Um, I have uh, plain walls in this apartment. So generally I use that. But when I'm in Iqluit at home, I will use um, just whatever bed sheets I have lying around. And it can be kind of funny to look back at auditions. I'll probably include a picture in here now. Um, of when I've done auditions with wrinkly bed sheets and nobody's ever said anything so if that's all you got that works. So this third step for doing an audition for this you just want to test your camera you want to test the stand that it's on you want to test the audio test your lighting and you want to test your background so generally what I like to do is I will stand up my phone um, my phone camera wherever it may be and I'll start filming and I will run through a few lines I'll go and I'll sit where I plan on sitting during the audition, try to see where I'm gonna fit in the frame, whether it's going to be waist up, shoulders up, or hips up. I'll test all of those things, and then I'll test the lighting, make sure that nothing's too bright, nothing's too dark, and I'll test my background to make sure that it looks right, it's not um, causing any distractions or distortions, and also checking the camera to make sure that the, um, that the camera's focused on my face. I've done this a couple times <laughs> where the camera has been focused on the background and not on my face. So this next step is one of my favorite parts of doing an audition and something that I have a lot of fun with every time I do an audition and that is dressing the part. So when you're doing an audition, you really want to look into the character and think about how they would dress, how they would hold themselves, um, how would they do their hair, how would they do their makeup. And this can make really all the difference in how you feel portraying this character and, you know, kind of embodying their energy and um, the person that they are. You also want to make sure that you draw a fine line when you're doing your audition and you don't wear anything with super bold prints. It's a super floral shirt. It's very printed. It's very bright. So that's something that I generally wouldn't want to wear in, a, in an audition because it can be very distracting. So your eyes hold all the emotion. You want all the attention to be there. So generally you want to wear something with a solid color or something that's simple. You also want to make sure that there's no big logos on the stuff that you're wearing. 
you want to make sure that you're not wearing white. White can cast a shadow on your face and it can look very unflattering. So that's generally something that you should avoid when you're doing your auditions. Also with hair, you want to make sure that your hair is out of your face. I know this can be particularly a problem if you're wearing your hair down. So I'll have it like tucked behind my ears, but have fun with your hair. Wear it how you think the character would wear it. When it comes to makeup, um, it's good to have just a base layer. I always have foundation, a little bit of blush, and a tiny bit of mascara on when I do auditions. You really gotta be conscious about what you're putting on your face and if it fits the time period, if it fits the character. And I know for some people that makeup is what makes them feel confident and not, we not wearing makeup can make them feel a bit vulnerable, but you really gotta put into perspective, you know, would an indigenous female in 1920 be wearing winged eyeliner? Most likely not. But there's also some auditions that are a little bit more fun, such as like playing a teenage girl, where I'll play around a little bit with eyeshadow. Don't be afraid to be a little bit bold or a little bit simple. It's how you see the character that really matters, and that little bit of personality that you add to the character can really leave a lasting impression on the casting director or on the director and kind of change their perspective of the character if you have that much of a impact on them. But you also want to make sure that you're adhering to whatever the audition guidelines are. So sometimes auditions will tell you minimal makeup, um, no eye makeup or minimal eye makeup. You don't want to disrespect the wishes of the casting director or the director. This is generally for the benefit of you to be able to understand kind of the character and the time period that they're in. So makeup is okay, it's very acceptable, a base layer is always okay but be very conscious of the time period and be very conscious of the character. So the next step for filming a self-tape audition at home is to have a reader. Have a reader while you're doing your audition. It helps so much. And have somebody that you're comfortable with. Have somebody that you're not shy around. As much as the scene is about you, your reader gives you a lot of emotion to work off of. Your reader gives you, um, you know, the idea that they're, you know, that they're the other character in the scene. So they're, also really really important to having a good audition and to making a good performance. My general tips for a good reader are somebody that you're very comfortable with. I read um, a lot with my sisters and my dad. They're not judging me and they're not um, making me feel self-conscious about what I'm doing and they really let me be in that moment and they bring out the best of every character that I try to play. Also make sure that your reader's not too loud but also not too quiet because if the reader is a little bit too much, it can be quite distracting, not just for you, but for the person that's gonna be watching the video. I've also had readers that were shy on camera and that weren't portraying enough emotion and that weren't loud enough for the casting director to hear. So there's a, definitely a fine line to find and you can look for it as you're doing you know, your run-throughs of your audition when you're testing your camera and your audio and everything to see what's a good happy medium for both of you. Also, you wanna make sure that your reader's in a good eye line. I like my reader to be a little bit to the right of the camera because I kinda of look this way and I think this is my good side. And you wanna make sure that like you're kinda of looking off at them. You never wanna do your audition into the camera unless specifically stated. Because if you're doing your audition directly into the camera, it can be really intense to be holding all this eye contact with the person that's going to be watching the video afterwards. You always wanna be looking at your reader. You wanna be portraying your emotion to your reader, the casting director or the director. They're watching your eyes. They wanna see how you portray that emotion, but they don't want you portraying that emotion at them. They want you portraying the emotion at the other character as it would look on, you know, on TV or in a film. Um, I generally have multiple eye lines, so I'll put stickers on my wall or I'll have water bottles standing up or I'll have candles to give me different places to look. So this next step is when you actually start filming your audition and you want to make sure that you give yourself a lot of time to film this audition from setup to um, finishing filming the audition completely. So what I like to do during this time is um, I'll run through the lines, I'll see um, what do I like best, how do I want to portray what emotion, how long do I want to spend, do I want to leave pauses in certain places, um, and then also really work through the actions of the scene because the actions of the scene can be sometimes complicated and sometimes they don't make sense. I've done auditions where, you know, right in the middle of the scene, the two characters are supposed to kiss. And I'm not going to be sitting here like, 
that doesn't make sense. With that particular kissing scene, I kind of just had, I let a beat pass, still in character, of course, and still making sense in the scene, but it wasn't awkward and it wasn't weird. If it feels awkward to you, it'll likely come across that way on camera and it'll likely come across that way to the person that's watching. Feel free to run through the audition as many times as you need to to get something that you're happy with. So if you, you know, say you film it three times and you watch all three of them and then you make little adjustments each and every time. I like to film an audition and then if I feel good about it, I'll watch it and see if there's anything that I want to change. Or if I don't feel good about it, then I'll be like, all right, let's do it. Let's go straight into another one. And that's the beauty of self-tape auditions at home is that you can do them as many times as you need to. There's no pressure like with a in-person audition. I know for some people, who are very um, insecure or lacking self-confidence that this can be really really hard and it's something that's even really hard for myself because I can feel a bit cringy to watch yourself doing a scene so take the time be confident be happy with what you're sending in um, there's nothing more important than that so lastly with the audition make sure that you have fun just have fun auditions are fun acting is fun and if acting is something that you're very passionate about you don't of course you want to put pressure on yourself to always do your best and to always feel like you're putting your best self forward don't put so much pressure on yourself that you feel like you know it's draining or that it's too much work because that can quickly take away the magic of acting and that can very quickly make it something that you don't want to do so Try to keep your energy up, try to stay happy, try to stay positive with what you're doing, be patient with yourself, be loving with yourself, and be kind to yourself. You know, auditions pass, I'm, you're not going to get every audition. I've done so many auditions, I've done so many auditions, and I've gotten two roles so far. So, auditions come and go, you're going to get a lot more no's than you're going to get yeses, and you have to get used to the no's, unfortunately but it makes those yeses a lot sweeter and a lot more, um, you feel a lot more accomplished when you get them. So don't be discouraged by no's and don't, don't let it take away from the fun of acting and your passion of acting.